Hi everyone, this is Chen Xi from UT Austin. And today I will present our work about certifiably robust reinforced learning through model-based abstract interpretation. And this is a joint work with Greg Anderson and Swara Chowdhury. So as you can tell from the paper title, we will talk about reinforced learning today. And reinforced learning is an established approach for various tasks, including lots of safety critical ones, such as cancer diagnosis or autonomous vehicle. However, existing state-of-the-art reinforced learning methods usually use neural networks as policy representations. And we know that neural networks are vulnerable. So here is a very famous example showing that why neural networks are vulnerable. So this is a case where researchers have an image about panda. And then researchers insert noises onto the image. And then even though the image still look very same from our human being's eyes, the image itself cannot be correctly classified by the neural networks. And the problems are more severe in reinforced learning setting because reinforced learning is a multi-step setting and one step's mistake can cascade. So here is one example where the reinforced learning controllers need to control a hopper and try to move it forward stably. We can see that in normal case, the hopper can move smoothly. However, if we add attacks onto the input of the reinforced learning controller slightly, the hopper fails to move forward and it falls down. And this is not what we want. What we really want is that even under this kind of attacks, the hopper can still maintain a stable pace to move forward and never falls down. So we call this process as defense. So there are two main categories about defenses. One is about certified defense. Another one is about heuristic defenses. So for certified defense, people usually would like to give some guarantees at the end of the defense. For example, when we, when we care about the neural networks in supervised learning setting, researchers would like to give the worst case performance guarantee about a, about a neural network in the certified defense domain. And then another category is about heuristic defense. And that's usually how the defenses look like in the current reinforced learning community. So the defenses would usually assume a certain attack or a certain distribution of attack and then train the policies to be against this attack. However, we think that heuristic defenses can always be defeated by counterexamples or counterattacks. So in our case, we would like to answer the question about can we do certifiable reinforced learning? Typically, we want to say that can we train a certifiable reinforced learning policy against the arbitrary attacks? So before digging our algorithm, I will give you a little bit of recap about how reinforced learning looks like. So in reinforced learning setting, we have a policy and an environment. And the policy and the environment will interact with each other again and again. So basically, the policy will pass an action to the environment. And then the environment will pass down the observations and reward back to the policy. And in our setting, we allow the attacks to attack, uh, to attack the observations by adding its own noises onto the observation. However, when we want to do the certified reinforced learning, we find two main challenges. One is that, as mentioned, we want to do certifiable reinforced learning. And then that means we want to cover all the potential attacks in this epsilon domain. And how should we represent and quantify these worst case attacks? And the second challenge is naturally uh, related to reinforced learning setting. This is where the reinforced learning setting, when we want to do certifiable reasoning about that, we need to reason over the interaction between the policy and the environment and also the policy and the environment itself. However, in reinforced learning, usually we do not have any prior knowledge about the environment. That means we cannot certify over black box environment. So how should we deal with that? 
So typically for the first challenge, we use abstract interpretation, which is a way used in formal methods to cover all the potential bound propagation over functions. And existing works in supervised learning have already proven that it can be used for neural network certification. And then for the second challenge, instead of trying to figuring out a method to reason over black box environment, we we train a white box environment to, uh, to replace this black box environment so that we can something to reason over. So concretely in our algorithm Carol, so the first step is that we train a neural network represented model for the black box environment. And this way, this neural network represented environment model is verifiable now. And the second step is that Originally, we require the policy to interact with the external environment. Now, we just ask this policy to interact with this newly trained environment model. And for the third step, then we design a symbolic reinforced learning algorithm besides this. So remember that we want to cover any arbitrary attacks. And because we have abstract interpretation, we represent all the potential attacks with an attacker set. And then we pass down the attacker set to the observations. In this way, we can have a set covering all the potential observations that can result from the attacks. And then later, we can pass down the observation sets down to the policy to get a set representation of the actions. And similarly, we pass the actions down to the reward again. And in this way, we can formulate a loop based on sets that can interact between the policy and the environment. And it can cover all the potential trajectories coming out from the attacks. And after this loop, we can get a, re a symbolic representation of the reward, where we can easily extract the lower bound of the reward. And there are two benefits from this lower bound of the reward. First, this lower bound gives us a way to verify the performance of a neural network. That means this lower bound of the reward is actually the, can show the worst case performance of a policy under attacks. And second, we also utilize this lower bound of the reward to guide the training. That is to say, we want to maximize this lower bound reward for the policy so that we can naturally have a policy that is more certifiable. We also have some very interesting theoretical findings of our work based on the algorithm. So we find that with probability one minus delta, the real reward uh, about the worst case performance is actually bounded by the rewards uh, found by our algorithm. So we show that here, the R is the real worst case reward, and the R hat here is the uh, reward bound found by our algorithm. And the N here represents the sampling numbers in reinforced learning, and the delta E is the model error, which measures the differences between the learned environment and the real environment. There are some interesting insights from this theory. So the first one is about the delta. We show that we, pay the, we need to pay for the price of a looser bond as we consider higher confidence levels. And this is intuitively making sense. And the second is about the sampling process. We find that the bond depends on the variance of rewards and also the sampling size. This means that a higher variance can make it harder to measure the true reward and more samples can make it easier and can give us a tighter bond. And for the third part, you can see from the last term, as the model error increases, the last term will grow. This indicates that a less accurate environment model will lead to a looser bound. That is to say, if we have a more and more accurate environment, we can have a very accurate bound. And the last point is about the time horizons. Because reinforced learning is a multi-step interactions, so the bond will grow with the time horizon T here. So we see that over longer time horizons, our reward measurement will get less accurate. 
So I will talk about some of our experimental results here. So we evaluate the reward bond under the worst case attack from our algorithms. And then we measure that across different time horizons. The first two methods we compare are our method and one reinforced learning method without any defense. And we find that the reinforced learning method without any defense cannot give us any meaningful reward bond. And you can tell from the figure that sometimes it can even reach negative infinity because it, there is no defense at all. And then we also care about how the policies would look like in a certifiable way if we insert heuristic defenses into it. So we tested some related works about heuristic defense in reinforced learning setting. So for here we can see that even though the reinforced learning with heuristic defenses can give us a little bit better reward bond, it can still not give us very meaningful certifiable worst case reward bond. So in summary, I would say our methods provide a way to certify reinforced learning policies. And at the same time, we also present a learning algorithm that can try to certify, can try to provide a more certifiable reinforced learning policy with long horizon reward bond. And our key idea are twofolded. One is that we incorporate verification in the loop. And the second is that instead of trying to reason over black box environment, we actually have a white box environment representation learning together with the policy. So last, I want to say that for the future, we believe that more accurate and scalable certified reinforced learning methods would benefit this area. Thank you. <laughs>